Ladies and gentlemen, your eminences, uh, I would first of all like to thank George Rokas for improvising these final brief talks to wrap up the conference. This gives me an opportunity to assess this conference from my point of view. I shall begin with an autobiographical note. My father's grandfather was the Mevlevi Sheikh of Ceres. I'm sure everybody is aware of Ceres. It's 80 kilometers north of Thessaloniki. And as you know, the Mevlevi uh, Brotherhood, a Sunni Brotherhood, uh, is actually the, uh, <coughs> the maybe initiator of the humanist, the tolerant kind of uh, Islamic tradition we have in this country, in Turkey, of course. And many of my uh, father's relatives, cousins and nephews have belonged to the Qadri sect, which is another important sect among the Sunni, Sunnis of Turkey. And then when, we, when I turn to my mother's side, my mother's father was from Skopje, a Muslim from Skopje. He was educated to become a Ottoman bureaucrat in Thessaloniki, which was Sal Salonika, Salonika at the time, and then he was appointed as one of the administrations in Lesbos, Mytilene. And he belonged to the unionist movement in Turkey, and he was an atheist. And his wife, my grandmother, on my mother's side was a very devout Sunni Muslim with veil and everything. But these two people, the atheist and the devoutly religious Muslim, loved each other so that they died one after the other with an interval of just shorter than a year. Why am I saying all this? I need. <laughs> I felt the need after listening to some of the speakers during the conference that Islam is not a monolithic religion. It's very diverse. It's equally diverse as Christianity. There are very different interpretations and understandings of Islam. And among the Muslims, there are also atheists since quite a few decades also. So what happened later on, there was this exchange of populations agreement between Greece and Turkey in 1923, and my father from Ceres came to be settled in Ayvalı, Kidonia, although Ayvali is also the name used by the Greeks, and my mother came from Mytilene to be settled in Ayvalı. And that's where they met and married. And they were very happy uh, to join uh, the other family members also in Ayvalık. And they became very, very much attached to Mustafa Kemal Pasha and regarded everything Mustafa Kemal Pasha did was the proper thing. So despite their various backgrounds, they become, became Kemalists and approved of the very authoritarian kind of secularism Mustafa Kemal Pasha introduced in accordance with the thinking of the times. Modernism at the end of the 19th and early 20th century meant secularization. Modernization would bring secularization. And this was the kind of environment I met personally in the family and also in schools I attended. And I was, like all of my age, became a Kemalist, basically, and defending the kind of modernism Kemalists stood for. 
But then in the latter part of the 60s, when I started attending university in Ankara, I had my first paradigm shift. This wasn't so difficult. It wasn't so difficult to move from Kemalism to communism. I became a member of the radical left-wing student movement in Turkey, an atheist like my grandfather, let's say. But during the 1970s, I experienced deep disillusionment with Marxism, communism, and atheism also. So I, I, I spent the 70s in Sweden doing my PhD in political science, and those years, about nine years in Sweden, gave me the opportunity to think over what we have been going through in Turkey, and I personally have been going through. I realized that people do not have just material needs, but also spiritual needs, and religion is an extremely important part of human civilization. And soon after, of course, social scientists started to discover that this hypothesis about modernization would bring secularization, move societies away from religion, was baloney. And that <coughs> the world was as religious as ever, if not more furiously so. And, of course, my personal experiences, my reading and learning, again initiated a paradigm shift in my thinking. And ever since, I have become a rather harsh critic of the Kemalist authoritarian kind of secularism, and all the irreligious and anti-religious thinking and feelings that goes along with it in Turkey. We have a very strong anti-religious uh, movement in Turkey, inspired partly by Kemalism and partly uh, uh, from earlier times, from the Unionist times. So religion is very important. Religion is part of religious freedom, is part of freedom of expression, but religious freedom also is freedom for believers as well as non-believers. So religious freedom cannot mean just freedom for believers. It has to mean, does mean, uh, freedom for atheists, deists, and non-believers. I think this is the way we should really approach the question of freedom of religion. I would finally like to thank uh, the ecumenical patriarch, patriarchate and the uh, Greek Orthodox Church of the United States for organizing this conference. This, I thought, was a very fruitful conference. There were uh, all the views present in Turkey represented, if briefly, but it has inspired me to try to work in Turkey for a conference, hopefully in Ankara, to bring together all these different groups of people, believers and non-believers, who feel their religious freedom is being trampled, and uh, work for solidarity, and <clears throat> achieve uh, unison in the fight against uh, restrictions on religious freedom. Now, <clears throat> I think there was, I think it was Mustafa Akyol who mentioned this, it is important to consider that the situation in Greece is not really much different than Turkey. Just please read the report on religious freedom 
every year produced by the State Department. And there you will see, I will not go into details because our subject is not Greece, but a conference, hopefully by the Ecumenical Patriarchate, is organized to discuss the restrictions on religious freedoms in Greece. If Greece improves, Turkey would improve also, and vice versa. And a final, final note. I am quite positive, optimistic, that these problems we face today are likely to be solved. In Turkey, this government may be suppressing all critical views about its performance, but it has one merit. It has allowed society to debate its major fundamental problems, be it religious freedom, be it the Kurdish problem, be it the military, uh, the political role of the military, and everything. Turkey discusses all of its major problems, and I believe that is the way forward. If society can discuss all these issues, solutions to these problems are uh, bound to follow. Finally, once again, I thank the organizers for this very, very fruitful conference, and I am really very happy to have spent uh, two days here, and I shall definitely write my impressions of the conference, and if you are interested, uh, I have a weekly column in today's Zaman, which is the leading English language newspaper in Turkey. It's very difficult to reach via uh, its online version. Thank you so very much.